Hey everyone, my name is Abhishek and today we are going to create this. So this logo build up animation is done entirely using Blender and there are no simulations involved in this one. This is created only using two modifiers. You can use this technique for any kind of object. So let's begin. Alright, so I'm in Blender and the technique that I'm about to show you, I learned it from this guy called Smeef or Smurf. So I learned it in one of his video and this is such an amazing technique that you can use to create these kind of animations without having to worry about any kind of simulations and all. So I'll put a link in the description for his channel in case you want to check it out. He's a really amazing guy. So let's continue. So we are in Blender. So first we will select everything by pressing A, let's X to delete. Now I'm going to import my logo. If you have already imported, it's fine. Otherwise you can use an SVG file. So go to file, import and over here select the SVG. So I'm going to use this Nike logo, which is in SVG format. Just click on import. So here you can see we have imported our logo. Let me just quickly zoom in because it's quite small. So you can see that there are a couple of things that we don't need. For example, this one. So I'm going to press X to delete this. Also this one, let's press X to delete this. Now we have individual letters just like this. Now all of these are in curves. So I'm going to first convert them to mesh. So for that, let's select everything by pressing A. Then you can press F3. Now let's search for convert to mesh and just click on this. Now you can see that all of these have been converted to mesh. Now we can press S to scale this up. So I'm going to just scale it quite a bit, something like this. So now I'm going to move its origin point to the center. So for that, just go to object and go to origin and set the origin to geometry like this. So now you can see that we have the points on the center. Now you will notice that all of these are in individual characters, but if you want, you can combine them as well. So you can select everything, then go to object. And from here you can click on join to join everything. Now you can see that it's a single object, or if you want to animate all of these individually, then you can just leave them as it is. So I'm going to leave them as it is because I want to animate individual elements. So once you're done with this, let me just quickly place them in the center. So let's press seven numpad seven G and let's move it to somewhere around here, somewhere in the center, sort of like this. Perfect. So here we have our logo. Now I don't want any kind of material onto this. So I'm going to select this. Let's go under the materials tab and I'm going to just click on this negative icon so that we can get rid of all of these materials. Perfect. So now you can see that it's flat. I'm going to add a little bit of geometry to this. Let's add a modifier. So I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier first. So let's apply this and I'm going to set this to two. After that, I'm going to apply a solidify modifier. So over here, let's search for solidify. And over here, you can see if I increase the thickness, you can see that we can add some 3D depth to this. Now it's completely up to you. You can just pick whatever you want. I'm going to set this to 0.12 or 11 like this. Yeah, I think this is looking perfect. Now I'm going to apply the same modifiers onto all of these. Now it's actually quite easy. All you have to do is just simply select this this and this and at last just select this object which has all the modifiers now you can just go and click and copy to select it and let's go and open this up now here you can see we have already applied now in case you are seeing some distortion just simply click them to simple so let's just change these to simple now in the same way we can apply solidify as well so let's just simply copy to select it perfect so now here you can see we have all of these now let's see how to create this kind of animation. So it's actually quite easy. What we are going to do is we are going to use a Boolean modifier and let me just quickly show you what a Boolean modifier does. So if I press shift A, let's let me just quickly add a mesh. So I'm going to use an UV sphere, but it's completely up to you. You can pick whatever you want. Let's add a subdivision surface to this and I'm going to just set this to one and just apply this. Now I'm going to select this arrow which we have over here and on this one I'm going to apply a modifier called boolean and over here we have this option for object. Now under the object I'm going to use our sphere. You can either select from here or you can just use this dropper. Now you can see that we have selected but you will notice that nothing has changed. So if I scale this down and just place it somewhere around here. Now if I go under the collections panel over here I can just hide this object or you can just simply select this and press H. Now you can see that we have hide our object 
and you will notice that we have cut out this shape from wherever we have this object now in case you want to make it appear you can press alt h and you can see that it is cutting out in a smooth manner which is the shape of our object so now we can modify this as well so before we continue if you enjoy my content and you want to support me then you can check out my patreon page over there you will find access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon it also helps me to create content for you guys so make sure to check it out link for that is in the description so let's continue so for that i'm going to select this and on this one we are going to apply a displace modifier so let's apply a displace and just click on new and we can click on these two pills icon so just click on that over here we have the option to select any kind of image we want so i'm going to select the clouds so now you can see that our object has already started to look like this and over here we have a bunch of different properties you can play around with the scale you can play around with the size however you want so it's completely up to you and let me just quickly do it like that so now if I hide this, you can see that now we are able to see some this sort of shape and we can do one more thing. I'm going to just select this and right click. Let's shade smooth. And now you can see that we have these very nice edges and this is exactly what we want. So I'm going to just go over here. Now I'm going to animate its position. So I basically want this to follow all of these paths. So I'm going to animate it so that it follows this curve and it will keep on going and revealing this logo so let's quickly do that so i'm going to press 7 now i'm going to press g and let's place it over here and let me just quickly place it like this so that the starting portion is not visible at all now if you want to play around with its size you can do that you can just press s to scale this up after that just make sure to apply the scale so press ctrl a let's apply the scale like this so we have this now in order to animate this i am going to go to the very beginning somewhere around here now we probably don't need to see these so i'm going to hide these not this one let's hide all of these so let's select this and i'm going to press i let's add a keyframe for location now let's move to somewhere around 30 and i'm going to just move it like this so that you can see that it is moving from here revealing this part and i'm going to add one more keyframe let's add a location keyframe now we can go to somewhere around 80 now i'm going to press g and i'm going to just move it over here and again press i let's add location keyframe so if i play back you can see we have our object moving perfect and we have our logo over here now if i select this and if i hide this from here now if i press play you can see that we have our logo and you can see that it is appearing but you will notice one more thing that we don't have any kind of motion into this so we can do that in two ways we can either animate the sphere we can animate its rotation to have these moving so if i rotate this along the z-axis you can see that now different portion will cut this logo and we will have a very nice animated edge or there is one more thing that you can do so if i select this let's go under the modifiers tab you can see that we have the coordinate option so instead of local we can set this to object now under the object we can add an empty object so press shift a let's add an empty and let's add a plane axis now i'm going to press g y and let's place it over here now again i'm going to select this and over here i'm going to select the empty which we just created now if i play back you can see that our sphere will automatically animate as it is moving across the path and you can see that we have this very nice animation so if i hide this now and now if i play back you can see that all of these edges will have really nice animation to them if i probably zoom in and now if i move you can see that now all of these edges are being animated now if you want to make these more then you can just simply select the sphere which we have over here and you can play around with the strength like this to make them like smaller or larger however you want or you can also go inside the texture and from here you can play around with how many curves you want if you want to have like really spooky kind of edges then you can do this or you can just simply use a lighter one like this so we are pretty much done with this now and next step is to add a camera to follow this motion which is actually quite easy so all you have to do is just simply press shift a let's add a camera now i'm going to just pick an angle like this so make sure that the camera is selected now you can press ctrl alt numpad 0 
to align it to the view now press n let's go to view and let's add a camera to view now i'm going to pick somewhere where we have the beginning of the animation something like that perfect now we can just place the camera to somewhere around here so that none of these areas are visible in case these are visible then you can play around with the size of the sphere you can just increase this now i'm going to select the camera and let's press i and i'm going to add a location and rotation keyframe now we can press play and you can see that the object is being revealed and let's go to somewhere we have the object completely revealed something like here so we can probably press i and let's add keyframe for location and rotation so here you can see we have the camera following this now you can play around with some of these settings for example you can see that this is more this needs to be placed over here something like that again press i let's add location and rotation keyframes so if i press play you can see that we have this camera following this path now we can make it move to somewhere around 80 frames something like that so let's select this and i'm going to move the last keyframe somewhere around 80 and i'm going to just change its position to something like this let's press i let's add location and rotation keyframe so now if i move back you can see that our camera is following the edge very nicely something like that now all of these are bezier keyframes so you can select them press t and from here set these to linear and I can do the same thing with this sphere as well. So let's enable this sphere and select all of these keyframes. Press T and just make them linear. Now we can probably hide this. So here you can see we have this reveal and our camera is following it. Now in case some of these areas are visible, let me just quickly open this up. So we can probably get out of this camera and I'm going to select this. Press S and I'm going to just scale this up quite a bit. Press Ctrl A, let's apply scale. Now we can probably hide this. So now we can go back to the camera. So here you can see we have this very nice reveal and now our camera is following this. Perfect. So here we have our logo reveal. So now we are done with this and using the same technique you can reveal all of these letters which we have over here which is exactly what I did in the example. Now let's quickly see how to apply the materials onto this. So first I'm going to select this and let's open our tab and I'm going to go to the shader editor and you can use EV or cycles whatever you want but for this example I'm going to use the cycles so let's switch this from EV to cycles device I'm going to set this to GPU compute let's go to the rendered view and you can see that we are able to see something like that so let's switch this to world tab so first I'm going to add an HDRI so over here we have this background now I'm going to select this press ctrl T if you have node wrangler installed otherwise you can just manually import these nodes by pressing shift A and over here you can search for texture coordinates and you can just simply select this and just drag it after that just plug the generated into vector vector goes into this vector and you can just plug it everything now let's open up so I'm using these polyheaven HDRIs which are completely free in case you want to use them i'll put a link in the description from where you can download this so i'm going to select this one just click on open now we have this very nice lighting and i don't want to see the hdri so we can go inside the settings and under the film we can enable the transparency now we have this so i'm going to select this object let's change this to object and let's click on new and i'm going to call this metal so again we are going to change a couple of the settings so first I'm going to add a texture. So let's select this, press Ctrl T. Again, if you have Node Wrangler installed, you can do this. Now let's go inside the image texture and I'm going to click on open. So now I'm going to use this texture. Now this is completely free and I downloaded it from Unsplash. So I'll put a link in the description for this one as well in case you want to use this one. Just click on open. So we have our image texture and right now it's not visible because we have to change the texture coordinate. So I'm going to set this to object or you can also select the generated yeah let's go with the generated one so we want this to have a metallic look so for that let's enable the metallic and i'm going to set this to one perfect now here are a couple of settings which we can do so we can select everything and let's move it over here now i'm going to add a pump node so press shift a first i'm going to add a noise texture and let's add it over here now i'm going to press shift a Let's search for bump. 
now you can plug the factor into height and this normal will go into the normal now here you can see we are able to see some bumps now in case you are not able to see anything then you probably have to play around with the hdri and let me just quickly rotate the z-axis so i'm going to just change the lighting angle something like that now you can see we have this very nice edge let's go back to the object now over here we have this and in case you are not able to see anything then we can crank up the strength and play around with the scale as well so here you can see we are able to see something and if i lower this down something like that now we can play around with a couple of these settings so we have this thing for roughness so i'm going to just set it over here now we can do one more thing we can probably plug this vector and just plug this into this vector as well now you can do one more thing you can add a color ramp so let's add a color ramp and let's place it over here now let's plug this vector over here and this color will go inside our roughness over here so here you can see we have created this sort of surface and now if you want to make this extreme then you can play around with these values as well so i'm going to just make these closer like these and let me just quickly increase the detail and we can play around with the scale as well to something like that so here you can see we have created this very nice surface again this is completely up to you can just play around with these values and if i go back to the timeline and now if i play back you can see that we are able to see our logo being revealed again you can play around with the lighting so you can change its position something like this so here you can see we have created our animation now in the same way you can animate all of the other objects as well which we have over here you can animate them just in the similar way so i'm going to open up the project which i created so this is the project that i created for this animation and you can see that it has the similar kind of structure we have all of these letters and i animated them individually in all of these different collections so first i animated this so here you can see we have this camera following this curve as it is being animated and revealed and after that i just duplicated this sequence by simply selecting this right click duplicate collection and in the second one i just animated the other letter so over here you can see we have this similar kind of structure so if i open this up here you can see we have this and we i animated the n letter over here so i'm going to just quickly hide this and here you can see we have this camera movement which is following this n and if i select this press ctrl and numpad zero here you can see we have this letter being revealed something like this and in the same way i animated all of the other letters as inside these collections and you can have multiple reveals as well so here i am revealing the n and the i letter simultaneously and in the same way i did this k and e and at last i had this simple reveal of this logo which we, which is nothing but just a top view of this logo so if i go inside the camera you can see we have this logo and here we have this simple zooming out animation like this so after that i imported all of these in after effects just created a really nice sequence did some color grade and on top of it added some sound effects to get this kind of look so this is how you can create these kind of animations and the best thing is that you don't have to do any kind of simulation all you need is just a couple of these nodes basically you need two one is displace and the other is boolean to get this kind of look and you can use this technique to reveal any kind of logo or text whatever you want so i hope you learned something from this one and the project files for this tutorial is available on patreon so if you're supporting me over there then you can download it from there and in case you are not then you might consider it because you will get access to the tutorial project files and exclusive templates that are available only on patreon so with that being said my name is abhishek and i'll see you in the next one